Okay, oh, hold sorry. on, hold on. This is what I do. I start before Saunders be filming. <laughs> So tell us what we're going to do today. We are going to pot up a Amorphophallus titanum. So many people know it as the corpse flower. It's the, the giant stinking plant, smells of rotting flesh carrion. It's the largest inflorescence in the world, not the largest flower, but the mm -hmm. largest inflorescence, which are many flowers together. Um, the Rafflesia, right? Is yeah, that the Rafflesia the one? is the largest. Yeah. Rafflesia arnoldii is the, is the largest flower, which is also, it's a parasitic flower, which is really interesting. Amazing. Uh, it is a whole nother topic, but also very amazing. Yeah. Um, I thought we were just going to stand around looking at the pile of dirt all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we wanted to expedite things a little bit, and we got it out of the pot, which probably wouldn't have been all that attractive to watch anyway. Yeah. So, it was both of us. Talking. Yeah, it, it was something. It ended up yeah. with me on the pot, so. Yeah. So this is, this is, you can kind of see here, there's the, the tuber underneath. Wow. Um, so this is, I, I mean, the last time I repotted this was probably two years ago, maybe. Um, and it, it was, it might have tripled in size, but it, it's definitely doubled in size. I may be exaggerating a little bit when mm -hmm. I say tripled, but um, so this is exciting. I mean, this might be uh, a couple of years away from flowering, potentially. How um, do you know? The, the size, mm -hmm. so I, typically they're probably about this big, mm -hmm. but it could it could double, it could do this much growth in one year for sure. How, how can I lift it a little bit? Oh yeah, bit? of like course. I, wanna, I just wanna, I know there's soil on it, but holy mother. Yeah, yeah it's a heavy. That is heavy. It is heavy. Yeah. There's not much soil on it anymore. Yeah. We got most of it off. What's that then? That's the, that's new, growth, that's that's the new growth, that's the new growth point, yeah, yeah. But was there a plant here before? Or yeah. That, is that just it? Well, you, just you videoed the, Oh, you, yeah, video, you videoed one. another yeah. one, yep. So, so that, that whole plant died. It just, it went dormant, it, it went, it went, uh, it went so down. It just kind of goes down. In the tropics, this would probably uh, happen yeah. when it's, when it's the dry season versus the wet yeah. season, so the monsoon season. And it holds all that good stuff right here in the Exactly, yep. So every year it does a new, uh, not, necess not necessarily every year, but it, it'll, 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 it could go through the cycle like that of, of, of every year, but sometimes it's every couple of years. It depends on the, the, the environment, so if any, if, if a drought happens or something happens where everything kind of knocks down, it, it then it would then go down and then wait till the, the conditions are right. Do you uh, ever force them or can you force them? I, I, like, like you're forcing a bulb, you know what I mean? Right, right, I yeah, hear what you're so saying. Yeah, over. yeah. With, with bulbs you could, with the tubers like this, like this type of, this type of growth, yeah. it, I, don't, I don't know how you would necessarily force it because um, it, it went down not even a month ago, not even, yeah. not even a month ago. And here it is already sending up a new, yeah. it, it's like, it's ready to go. Um, yeah. So it came out of that pot? Yeah, that okay. pot. And now we're putting it into this pot Next so that size larger hopefully, well, I, hopefully we don't have to keep <laughs> up potting too frequently. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I could fit in there. Uh, you, you can, and, and you and need to did. have like wheels on this or something. And he did earlier. Yeah. So we're just going to put a little bit more in. We're not going to, we're not going to wet it down yet because it's going to be way too heavy to, mm -hmm. to move. Um, this is just a good Lambert's mix. It's a uh, nice light and airy peat base, light, nice light and airy. That's perfect, Andrew. Yeah, there you go. Good job. This really is, technical this is, skills. And it's heavy, so that's where all your Bikram yoga that's work right. is yes. coming that's right, in. in the Lowen house. <laughs> so we want the the crown to be. So I, I don't want to put any more soil probably than right here, anyways. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna probably just cover everything, which will be which will be great. Um, and you don't add any extra fertilizer or anything to this, or oh, do you? I do, and I'll probably toss this some. This is probably a hungry little beast, you isn't it? You said it. It's yeah. a very, it's compared to Nepenthes, or compared to other other plants, this, this plant has a voracious appetite. Yeah. Um, it definitely likes a very nutrient-laden uh, uh, mix. Does it, is it um, high in like phosphorus or high, what, what is it, uh, what do you usually typic, typically get? I, I usually, I do a, a combination of, um, so I, I like to use Maxi, mm -hmm. which is sort of like a, sort of like a um, seaweed extract okay. base, um, but I also use Osmocote uh, 16, 16, 16. Mm -hmm. um, so every time I fertilize in there with the Nepenthes, I'll, I'll actually go around with a Dosatron. So basically it, it takes a small amount of a concentrated fertilizer and, and injects it into the, the main watering wand. Mm -hmm. And so I put a mist valve uh, nozzle on the, 
on the end of the, the watering end. That's probably plenty. Um, and go around and, and sort of fog all the pitchers yeah. with the uh, fertilizer. And so there's always leftover fertilizer and I just dump it into the, the Amorphophallus titanum pots. Nice. Uh, so they, they get plenty. So this is like a little, uh, you like tucked them in for the evening, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then we'll, we'll go in with this gadget here to oh, move yeah, it. Oh so yes, I was going to say, where are the wheels? <laughs> and then water it, water it in really nicely, and, and, and that's it. I might have to top it off maybe with a, with a little bit, but uh, that's basically the repotting of a Titan Arum. Perfect. How did you miss the girls carrying the cinder blocks? <laughs> I didn't miss it, the <laughs> it really is a big change in temperature. I think that should be sufficient. sufficient. Let's try. Yeah. I Once mean, how quickly does it does it get to a size like that? Very quickly, like a couple of weeks. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's pretty amazing how quick. It's insane. I mean, it really is. I mean, the, the that's my first time seeing like the because um, you always go to see the flower, right? But right. you never get to see what's underneath. Right, and that's so, the rest of the year is yeah. the, the the foliage. Yeah. So you're really giving it a proper dousing in there. Oh yeah. Well, that, I mean, well, it'll drain. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and these these plants are lowland, super wet in the wild. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. like a... Uh, so when, when they go dormant, do you lessen the water or how do you, how do you work with it? Um, they, I mean, so they don't technically really go dormant. That might not be the right yeah, term. term. It's more like a... Take a break. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll <laughs> use that. It's, it's, it's a... Um, I do. I stop watering. I, yeah. I, I completely stop watering. Yeah. Um, so that that pot that this came out of, mm -hmm. I hadn't watered probably for a month, pretty okay. close to. Um, and then once I saw the growth point starting to come up, yeah, uh, that's when I knew to it was time to pot it up. Some people will once the plant goes down, they'll take them out of a pot, really get the soil off the the well the media, not the yeah. soil, um, and. Uh, and store it in a dry place, like under a bench yeah. in a greenhouse, you know, but, but on top of something to keep it from sitting in any water or anything right. like that, because they'll, they'll rot. Um, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things, but I found if you stop watering, the peat-based medias really tend Dries to dry out, up yeah, pretty cracks, well. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any issues. Have you ever tried with like um, coca coir, or is like that not feasible? I haven't. Okay. I, I think that would be worth doing. Yeah. Uh, we use coconut coir now for pretty much all of our mixes for yeah. the vast majority. It's just, it's more sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have to wash it off for like possible residue of salt? Oh yeah. You want to see our oh yeah, I do. So, I mean, if most of your stuff is coconut coir and you're still using the Lamberts for this, do you use Lamberts for anything else? I do. So some yeah. of the, I mean, most of the aeroids we use the coconut coir as well, mm -hmm. but some of them that seem to be a little bit more sensitive to that, we, we use the, oh, we it's use a like a mix. stock pot. It is a big stock pot. So it is actually a With cauldron. A big colander. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's actually what the, the trolley's for, so yeah. you can move it when it's full of water. Okay, so you wash this off, you let any salt, if there is salt on yeah. it, like so come good. out, yeah. Typically three times we'll get the TDS to below 30. Oh, so you you need. actually test it then? Oh yeah, no, okay. we measure it. Okay. With the EC meter. Yeah. The nepenthes are super sensitive. I mean, yeah, right. orchids too, like the salt content is lethal to yeah. most plants actually. Yeah. Um, it's it's at the level where, where basically grass would probably be the only thing, like crabgrass, that would be the only thing that uh, what? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that way we can just move it. Okay. Yeah. It's full of water. It's gonna get that really heavy. Thank you. So then you have to like leach this out, wash it again, leach right. it out. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Typically pull it. Where do you pull it right out? Where do you pull uh, if it is salty? Where do you just can you just do it in the grass and that's yeah, fine? Yeah, the grass is fine. So yeah. we just use that out there for the grass behind okay. behind the greenhouse. The, the owners of the property, there's so much water that comes out of the greenhouse yeah. that 
uh, they had to build a wetland garden around the drain. Where the drains come out. Oh my gosh, We're like actually a rain garden. probably gonna have somebody come and yeah. take that somewhere else so that You're we like, don't. this used to be like a sandy, dry condition. Yep. And yeah, where they, could, where they could mow the lawn yeah. and everything was normal. It's like only moss growing out there now. Now it's grass like this tall yeah. because the mower will not go through the wet uh, areas. That's Maybe it. put a little bit more in, but yeah. it'll soak overnight, and then we'll drain it tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we'll drain it, we'll let it soak throughout the day. Eight hours, we'll, yeah. we'll do it for all we need, and then three cycles of that and stuff. How, what's the highest salt content? I mean, it can be upwards of 500 to 600 uh, EC or PPM, wow. so um, like six, seven, eight. That's kind of like the, the cutoff for anything living. Yeah. Uh, so grass can kind of do 700. Some grasses, crabgrasses, things like that. But uh, plants, like, I mean, Nepenthes kind of max out at around 100. Um, but we grow other things other than Nepenthes. So sundews are like 20 yeah. or less. Uh, you, so can, very low. Can you ever do distilled in your plants? No, you is it pretty could. much distilled or? It's not. So okay. distilled is, is less than five okay. um, uh, microsiemens. Um, and, and this is probably less than 10. Mm -hmm no more than 15, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. When it's washed three times in the way that... Uh, RO water, sorry, reverse oh. osmosis. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Versus distilled being less than five. Okay. Um, and then there's, then there's um, I mean, distilled can be zero, actually, yeah. closer to zero. And then there's also um, um, deionized. So there's reverse osmosis, mm -hmm. deionized, distilled. Um, and those are more for lab, like lab grade mm -hmm. uh, requirements. So you don't need to go that far, is don't basically need to, what you're yeah. saying. Okay. And, and at a certain point, I don't know, there is there are some, there is some work with with uh, the lower it gets, point where it could potentially leach a positive uh, right. uh, um, charged ions and actually affect the, affect the, the total biome mm -hmm. overall in the soil. Um, I don't know. I've heard, heard all sorts of arguments. I, that's beyond my bandwidth, mm -hmm. beyond my Beyond, my beyond your pay grade. Yeah, beyond my pay grade. <laughs> This is great. Thank you, guys. This is like such a wonderful uh, exploration into your world. Yeah. If you're looking to up your plant game, then check out our suite of courses and offerings, including Houseplant Basics, Troubleshoot Your Houseplants, the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet, and the Houseplant Masterclass. The courses provide you a certificate of completion when you're finished and a wealth of information that you could use to impress both your plants and your friends. More information can be found over at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're seeking more information about gardening outdoors and homesteading in the country, then check out our new channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. See you there.